All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Bindu Bard YouTube channel where I cover the latest crypto news every single day, Monday through Friday. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with everything going on in the incredibly fast-moving, fast-paced, irrational, crazy, insane, absolutely nuts crypto space. Uh, and yeah, if you are a regular viewer, welcome back and shout out to you. And let's get into it. So if you are sitting on the couch, if you're at the gym, if you're in the car, if you're at the grocery store, whatever you're doing, doing dishes, uh, let's get started. Grab a glass of water, get a nice cup of coffee. I've got a big, tall cup of coffee here. Uh, it's very exciting times uh, right now in the crypto space. We are literally on the cusp of greatness. We are on the cusp of mad gains. We are on the edge of glory. Shout out to uh, Lady Gaga. What a throwback, am I right? Uh, but yeah, I uh, pulled up this uh, this tweet when I was getting this video ready, and I was shocked. I literally was like, holy crap, because we have a outflow of 30,000 ETH from the Grayscale uh, Ethereum Trust. Uh, if... If you haven't been keeping up or you're new to the channel, we've been watching this pretty much every video for the last like month or so. Uh, and typically, like yesterday, I think there was like 300 ETH uh, outflow. Today, there's 30,000 in a day. That's more than we see uh, in a week uh, more often than not. And we have a 22,000 ETH inflow to the iShares BlackRock Ethereum Trust. That is absolutely freaking nuts. Uh, so for the daily, that that kind of cancels each other out, and we have a 7,000, pretty much 8,000 ETH outflow for the day and 15,000 ETH outflow for the week. Meanwhile, Bitcoin is pretty much green across the board except for pesky, pesky, you guessed it, Grayscale. Uh, they are just, all the outflows are with Grayscale. Uh, we have a little bit on the Invesco Galaxy Ethereum ETF, whatever the heck that is. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea what Invesco Galaxy is. But we are seeing the ETH in Grayscale really deplete pretty fast. It was 1.8 million ETH uh, in Grayscale like a week ago, a week or two ago. And now it's 1.6 million ETH left in the Grayscale Ethereum Trust. So it is cool to see that number going down. And this will likely flip green relatively soon. And by soon, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> maybe uh over a month you know i'm not really sure uh it's impossible to say as you guys know who watch the channel and again if you're new please make sure to hit that subscribe button not just for me but for you as well because i do share a lot of really great information every day here on the channel it's a great way to keep up with the crypto space uh, a lot of big channels that you're going to find in the crypto space they're selling you entertainment you know uh they are telling you what you want to hear this coin it's going to this price and it's definitely happening and you're going to be rich uh you know people want to hear that if that's what you want to hear go for it uh here i try to be reasonable i try to give you a balanced perspective on everything going on uh so if you like that, make sure to hit that subscribe. But anyway, moving on, Elja Bloom, a tweet from Elja Bloom, Bitcoin consolidation days are numbered. Soon, Bitcoin will break out of this range and pump towards a new all-time high. This is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so this was 200, this has been 224 days. Oh my gosh. That is a long time. If it didn't feel like that long, honestly. I, I actually thought that I thought that was wrong for a second. 224 days, but yeah, we've been kind of in this upward. Well, I mean, if this includes this big pump here, it hasn't been 224 days of sideways because this is, you know, this big pump was two weeks. But I mean, pretty much. Uh, and yeah, it, <laughs> that's crazy. It, it It's crazy how 
how time works when you are really uh, focused in on the crypto space. It's so weird. It's like time moves fast, but it also moves slow. Uh, one month in crypto feels like three years. Uh, <laughs> not exactly, but kind of, maybe not that extreme, but one month feels just like a really long time, but it goes by in the blink of an eye. It is quite odd, uh, how that works, but yeah, so things are looking very good. Uh, this is last time it was 224 days of consolidation down here, uh, from, around March to November. Now it has been again, March to about November. Very interesting how that works. Uh, and it is, we've been going sideways. And if you recall, you've been listening to the channel. It was like when the price went down, it was doom and gloom. Then the price went up. We're so back. Price went down, doom and gloom. Price went back up. Everyone was so happy. Then price went down again. It was, oh my gosh. And this was the Japan carry trade, I believe, crash right here in uh, August, which we talked about a lot on the channel. Shout out to all you guys who've been listening. And again, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. I'm not going to stop telling you to hit the subscribe button. So if you haven't done it, you better do it. Uh, but <laughs> anyway... It's funny because now in hindsight, we're like, oh, yeah, we were going sideways. And then this whole time I was I was telling you that's why that's why you got to hit that subscribe. If you aren't, I was telling you guys we're going sideways. Look at these articles. We just went down and they're freaking out. Now we're going up and they're all excited. Now we're going down and they're freaking out. And then now after we got through it all, it's like, oh, yeah, that was a sideways consolidation period. But when we were in that you know, period, it was like, wah, wah. it's just emotions it's the the washer machine of emotions as i call it on the channel that that crypto tries to put you through that many people become susceptible to and it's it's really hard i mean it's in some ways it's unavoidable it's so volatile uh, you know it's it's so crazy it's so fast moving you know it's 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 you know it's it makes sense to be somewhat emotional uh but you know, looking at the bigger picture, like I try to do on the channel, uh, that's for me at least helps me a lot in staying calm and realizing, okay, this is consolidation. It's all good. It's not over. I mean, people were saying during this time period we just had. Now, no one's saying it, but there were people that were like the the tops in the bull markets canceled. It's over. That was literally like two weeks ago. That was like stuff I was seeing on on the timeline for Twitter, or I guess it's X now. I was seeing it on X. I was seeing it around in chats. People were all worried, and now it's like this is the moment, guys. We're 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 right about to we're about to get rich, and it's just like, wait a minute, <laughs> weren't we? Wasn't it doom and gloom like three weeks ago? So, uh, yeah, pay attention to how you know. Be aware. Pay attention to how that happens. You you know, you're kind of a student. We're all students uh, all the time. Uh, for the crypto market, at least that's how I like to think about it. Like I'm always learning and gathering information and understanding, okay, during this period of time, let me look back on the chart and see, remember what it was like during that time. Interesting. And now we're in a similar period, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, gauge your emotions, gauge sentiment of others around you, you know, being on crypto Twitter, it's like, you know, it can be, it can be pretty lame. A lot of the time I took Twitter off my phone for a while during this consolidation. Cause I realized, you know, this is fine. And I didn't want to be caught up in the, you know, washer machine of just, just toxicity and, and people being upset and, Oh, the bear market, the bull market's over. Nothing's going to happen. Like it was just so lame. I was like, okay, I get off. But being on crypto Twitter, it's a good way to like study, you know, gauge the sentiment. What, what are people saying? What's going on? Um, telegram being around in different telegram groups for different coins, looking at what people are saying, how are people feeling? Uh, it's, it's a good way to kind of like keep up with, uh, the space. So yeah, we are all students of the crypto game and there's many ways to learn. And that's that's one that I like is just paying attention to what people are saying, comparing it to what's going on on the chart. Uh, but yeah, things are looking good. Uh, Bitcoin is getting close to 65K. 
And hey, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe the bear the bull market is over. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I think things are going great. I think we are going to get a great bull market. I think Bitcoin is going to break that all time high it hit of seventy something k, seventy two k, or whatever. Uh, and we're going to go, you know, past that and it's going to be awesome and altcoins are going to rip. I think that will happen, uh, but it could not like, it, you know, I don't know. So <laughs> there's there's the wise information. Great information for you guys watching the video could go up or it could not. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Benjamin Cowan, a renowned uh, TA guru, I guess you could say, very well known in the crypto space. He thinks the ETH Bitcoin ratio is entering into a bottoming process just like 2016 and 2019 after it broke down. Always possible for it to go a bit lower in that range than it has, but I think that the window for doing so will close by end of year. And apparently, historically, ETH performs very well at the beginning of the year. And you can actually see that right here in 2021. Start of 2021, all of a sudden, ETH, boom, boom, boom. Uh, 2017, look back here at 2017. Even 2016, the start of 2016, boom, ETH, ETH goes up, dumps. Start of 2017, boom, ETH shoots up. Uh, so that would actually make sense. It actually looks really similar to this fractal of 2017. It looks a l very similar if you if you look at it, you know, three big monthly red candles uh, and then the start of 2017 was one, two, three, four, five, six straight months of green giant candles against Bitcoin. So that means Ethereum was outperforming Bitcoin. This is Ethereum priced in Bitcoin. Uh, that is something you can do as a more experienced crypto person. You can start to look at the price of cryptos. Uh, against other cryptos so you can gauge okay was it worth me taking on this risk of buying eth over bitcoin uh, did eth outperform bitcoin okay yes it did then it was worth it for me to buy eth instead of bitcoin that kind of thing uh, instead of looking at the price chart trying to measure which one went up more you know blah 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 you can actually chart them against each other which is pretty cool uh, and you can do this for pretty much any crypto you can chart any crypto against another crypto um so that's just something if you're new, you might not have known that. Uh, and it's kind of a more advanced way to understand and navigate this crazy, crazy, crazy crypto space. So, yeah, we're going to keep our eye on this uh, and let's move on. <laughs> Bitcoin price coils. I think of a snake when I see that for some reason. Bitcoin price coils as market confirms 65K is real resistance. The real resistance. Bitcoin price chop is still the name of the game with Bitcoin bulls yet to mount a charge at a $65,000 sell wall. So Bitcoin price chop may face October reckoning. Uh, and that is reckoning like event, not rec reckoning like the reckoning like everyone's going to get wrecked in October. Uh, so anyway, uh looks like 65k is a big you know price point price is struggling to find momentum around 65k there's clear passive selling around 65k which confirms market views that price uh that price is real resistance uh so we will have to see there is bid liquidity placed between 60 and 62k which basically means there is money waiting to buy those prices uh and there's there's money waiting to sell at 65k, so that's pretty interesting to know. Uh, knowing what is the liquidity, what is going on, where is their buy pressure, where is their sell pressure? It's all very cool stuff uh, you can kind of analyze, uh, which is kind of fun, kind of interesting. Uh, you know, you guys know me; I don't necessarily care too much about short term. You know, what's going to happen in the next week, kind of stuff. It's kind of impossible to predict. Well, that's a lie. I do enjoy short-term stuff, but it's more for fun. I'm not trying to be like, oh, what's it going to happen? Uh, you know, very like seriously, but it's fun. You know, it's fun to keep up with, fun to speculate like, ooh, what's going to happen? Uh, but overall, long-term is the way to win, in my opinion. So 
Yeah, so September 26th was due to see U.S. macro data releases return to the forefront, including jobless claims and Q2 GDP, followed a day later by the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index print, known as the preferred inflation gauge for the Federal Reserve. Uh, United States Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell was also due to deliver pre-recorded remarks at the 2024 U.S. Treasury Market Conference at the New York Fed. They're saying that September 26th was due to see, did it change? They don't, they're not really saying if it changed. I'm not really sure what's going on. That is tomorrow, so maybe that will happen. Maybe it won't. They kind of said that weird. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so just something to pay attention to, something to, to know. 65K seems to be a bit of a resistance point for the Bitcoin price, and we will see what happens. You can actually see it in this image. You can see uh, the big, the big walls here, the big green walls of uh, uh, money, basically waiting to be sold in that at that price point. So, yeah. All right. Moving on. BlackRock Bitcoin ETF options to set stage for GameStop-like gamma squeeze rally. Bitwise predicts. Uh, so that is pretty cool. If we if if Bitcoin had a GameStop type rally, that would be absolutely insane, uh, and that would mean other coins like altcoins and stuff would be absolutely even more insane, and that would be awesome. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is definitely something that is interesting. That would be pretty cool if it happens. Not going to go too deep into this article, but every article, every tweet I look at is linked in the description below. So make sure to check it out uh, if you want. And you can go through and read all this stuff for yourself. If you're like, oh, I wish Ben went more into it. Well, you can go more into it uh, yourself. And that is awesome. So Glassnode co-founders say crypto on the verge of altcoin season. Here's their timeline. Uh, altcoins have followed the bullish momentum of Bitcoin. It seems that we are on the verge of an altcoin season. We are bound to experience it intensely once Bitcoin breaks its all-time high and enters uncharted territory. So, uh, thank you, Captain Obvious. Once Bitcoin breaks its all-time high, everything will be bullish. It's, <laughs> it's like, wow, look at these genius, <laughs> these geniuses here. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I can't really talk, though. I'm sitting here telling you guys, you know, could go up, could go down. So, <laughs> but anyway, the classic is Bitcoin first. This is what the, the analyst says. Then rotation into ETH, then large caps, then mid caps, then small caps. What the heck is this guy talking about? You might be thinking he's talking about market caps. He's not talking about, you know, bottle caps. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of, you know, and I when I first got into crypto, like really got into it in 2020, you'd see these graphs and it was like, Here's how the money flows in crypto, Bitcoin to ETH to large caps, then mid caps and small caps. And it's talking about the market caps. So it's basically just money goes into Bitcoin, then it goes into Ethereum, then it goes into coins that are slightly less, they're, they're slightly smaller than Ethereum, then it goes into coins that are slightly smaller than that, and then it goes into coins that are even smaller than that. And so the money kind of trickles down and then everything kind of pumps. Uh, so that is basically what that means. So... <clears throat> Since May, we have seen Bitcoin push up three times without any sign of an altcoin season. Now we saw the altcoin cycle indicator spike to near 50 before Bitcoin showed strength. We have a feeling the next run up will happen together. This is a pretty cool chart. I have not seen this before. Uh, and it kind of shows big altcoin season and Bitcoin season. Or is this, this might be the same exact chart as um, the one we have looked at on the channel. Uh, but yeah, so very interesting stuff. Looks like we're, yeah, we're actually at the cusp of altcoin season, literally by the looks of this chart. Uh, we are like right there at it. So that is going to be very, very exciting. Uh, yeah, so moving on. Citibank says family office interest in crypto assets continues to increase, especially in one region. Interest in crypto assets by family offices is on the rise. Uh, Citibank's uh, Global Family Office Survey report says that around 25% of the family offices that participated had already invested or, or were planning to invest in digital assets. The survey drew responses from 338 family offices, one third of which were based in North America. 
The early adopters category, 17%, is likely to grow in the years ahead, having already committed some allocations to digital assets or crypto-related investments. Another 10% of family offices were digital asset curious, <laughs> i.e. considering an allocation but still researching the subject or seeking advice. I have a confession. I'm digital asset curious. <laughs> what? Family offices in the Asia Pacific region, according to the survey, were the most active in investing in digital assets. That's very interesting. Asia Pacific led in digital assets adoption with 37% of respondents invested or interested in investing. One in 20 family offices in that region reported more than 10% of investable assets in digital assets. By contrast, Latin American family offices were the least interested with 83% not yet prioritizing an allocation to this area. That's very interesting. I wonder why that is. Why is Asia Pacific area people are more interested in crypto than Latin America? Um, so maybe some sort of cultural reason. Uh, like, I mean that seriously, I don't really know. Um, so it's interesting that it's interesting to see how the different parts of the world are prioritizing, uh, you know, their interest in crypto. So per the survey, around 24% of family offices are interested in investing in crypto assets directly, while 18% prefer crypto linked investment products such as exchange traded funds, ETFs. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, at the same time, two thirds of participants were undecided about which digital asset product to explore underscoring family offices ongoing need for education about this emerging asset class hey education that's what i'm all about here on the bendy bard youtube channel shout out to me myself <laughs> and to anyone else who's helping educate people in the crypto space that is what's up uh and yeah it's it's exciting it's a good time to be in crypto it's a good time to know about crypto uh if you're here now you are an early adopter of crypto i know you know maybe it feels like you're late to the party i felt late to the party in 2020 uh when i first bought my first ever crypto in 2017 i felt late to the party uh, but I didn't really fully get into crypto in 2020. And then I felt even later and I was like, wah. Uh, and then the bull run happened and I was like, I was early. I wasn't late. I mean, I was late, but I was also early, you know, because there's people who've been around since 2013, 2012. Like they've been there, been here since the beginning. The real OGs. Shout out to the real OGs. Uh, but yeah, like... Uh, Everyone always feels late and people in 2017 were probably like, oh my gosh, I'm late. And then now it's 2024. And it's like, if you had gotten into crypto, then stuck around, there's a lot of time to make a lot of money in different uh, cryptos. So yeah, I, you know, <clears throat> you're still very early. I mean, when you think about, I've talked about this before, but like no one even knows what crypto, they don't like people kind of know what Bitcoin is. They think Bitcoin and crypto is like the same thing. They're like, oh, you're talking about Bitcoins. It's like they don't realize, like, I don't think most people even realize there's other cryptos or like they just don't understand. They're like, isn't everything on Bitcoin? Like, oh, that was built on Bitcoin. Like, they have no idea about any of this stuff. Uh, so yeah, we are super duper early. And if you have a hardware wallet and you're interacting in DeFi, you are like mega super duper ahead of like 90% of <clears throat> the population, I think. I mean, that's just a, that's just a guess. I don't, but I would think like it's absolutely, absolutely insane uh, how early we still are, I think. Um, so it's very exciting. And if you want to learn how to get into DeFi and how to keep your crypto safe and all that good stuff, uh, check out the cryptoacademy.win in the description below, uh, which will be coming out somewhat soon, probably within a month. Uh, the course will be live. It's recorded. It's going to be awesome. There will be very good tutorials, a lot of great information. I've been working on this course for like three years over three years been a lot of uh <clears throat> tweaking and fixing and adding and taking out and and making it as best as it can possibly be so it's going to be awesome and there'll be a referral as well so you can refer people uh, and actually sell the course yourself which is sick <clears throat> all right next article the sec needs to end war on crypto and return to being a constructive regulator says commissioner 
So SEC Commissioner Mark Uyeda tells Fox Business that the SEC hasn't laid out adequate rules to spur innovation in the sector. One of the he's this is one of the top officials at the U.S. SEC. So why are you telling people it needs to? Why aren't you changing it? <laughs> what the heck is this guy talking about? It's like if I was like, yeah, you know, the Bindu Bard YouTube channel really needs to, uh, you know, fix fix things. It really needs to clean things up. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, this is so funny. So. Uh, but it's it's nice to hear at least like that's that's interesting. I feel like this should get more attention. I haven't seen this really posted anywhere. Uh, granted, this looks like it came out today. I haven't really been on Twitter much today or or anything. But it, I don't know. This seems like a bigger deal than it's. I don't know. It's it wasn't on any other news website. I found this on this website only. I go through like ten to fifteen different news websites, you know, to get these articles for for the videos for you guys. Uh, so hit the subscribe button for that. Leave a like on the video as well. But anyway, <clears throat> this is what he said: We have not provided the rules of the road for crypto. Other than to declare that nearly all are securities, nor have we provided a practical pathway to comply with our rules. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's literally like, this is crazy, you know, I, crazy in a good way. Like he's, they're admit, he's admitting like, yeah, we like, we are being assholes, basically. Pardon my French. Instead, we have wasted time and money on crypto enforcement actions that provide limited guidance at best. At the same time, we are using enforcement resources on crypto. The commission is falling short in protecting seniors from relationship and affinity scams, which can be devastating when their retirement investments are stolen. That is absolutely disgusting. I hate that. Uh, presuming that everyone in the market is a potential scammer and fraudster unless proven innocent is the wrong course of action and not the American way. Thank you. Gosh, I, I have like I, like when I tell people I'm in crypto, like. The SEC, the way they've been, the, the way they've been treating anyone in crypto like a potential scammer or fraudster, it's, it's, it, uh, it's affected the way the media talks about crypto, and it's affected the way average people who don't know about crypto how they think about crypto and anyone in crypto. So, it sucks when you're like, it, like you're like me, you're in crypto, you're doing good stuff. I'm, I'm actually trying to help people. I'm actually trying to teach people. I actually, like being a good person in the space and <clears throat> it feels like when I talk about it with people who have no idea about crypto, they get this weird vibe. They're like, Oh, crypto. And they're like, huh? And it's like, you know, I don't take it personally. Cause I mean, I kind of did at first. I'm like, Oh, but like I've realized and learned, like, it's not really personal. It's just, they really don't know what the heck is up with crypto at all. And it's because of this. So, you know, to hear to hear this, you know, hear them say that it's it's very nice uh, for someone like me who's publicly, you know, in crypto YouTube channel with my my real name. You know, I'm open about it. I tell people I meet them. I'm like, yeah, I do crypto. Like, I have a YouTube. Like, <clears throat> people like they scoff or they're like, oh, like oh what? Like oh like they they get weird about it. You know, and it's like I feel like I have to like. I have to like assure people like, oh, I'm not scamming people. <laughs> it's just like, that's how it feels to, to tell people don't know about crypto. You're in crypto. It's like, I don't know. It kind of sucks. And maybe that's just me. Like, maybe that's what I'm thinking. But I don't know. I kind of, and with family too, I think they're like, oh, you know, he's in that, oh, he's doing that weird, oh, he's doing weird stuff. Like, he's in the weird crypto stuff. It's like, no, like, I, uh, you know. There's real legitimate good people in the space too. And then the like we get a bad rep because of how uh, the SEC is treated crypto, how the media is presented crypto. It sucks. So very nice to hear this. Uh, so uh, President Joe Biden appointed Uyeda, a Republican, to his role as commissioner in 2022. He and fellow Republican Commissioner Hester Pierce have often criticized the SEC Chair Gary Gensler for his active approach toward the crypto sector. Both have also dissented against multiple SEC enforcement actions. So you have two, like the two high up people below the main guy sitting there publicly talking about how the main guy sucks. Like, why can't something be done about that? I don't understand. So maybe there will be some change at the SEC soon. It is an election year. That would be really awesome. I mean, like... I think everyone in crypto, especially those of us who are good people, just who like it, like, 
I think we all want like clear rules and regulation that's fair, you know, for the actual scammers who are stealing people's retirement investments and manipulating people like we want them to actually get in trouble, like actually be held accountable and actual guidelines for taxes too. like, just make it simple, please. Like it shouldn't, it's just crazy how stressful things like that are like where you don't know if you're doing the right, you want to do the right thing, but you have no idea. Like (laughs) if you're like doing it wrong or right, like it's crazy. So it'd be nice to see that. Uh, so Caroline Ellison sentenced to two years in prison. Well, which is kind of crazy. So her crimes, she could have faced 110 years in prison, but she got two instead. Uh, what? Uh, she, uh, basically the judge said, you're a very strong person. Uh, Mr. Bankman Freed had your kryptonite. You were vulnerable and you were exploited. So I guess sexy hunk, Sam Bankman Freed, (laughs) very attractive guy. I don't know if you guys have seen Sam Bankman Freed, but he's very, very attractive. So it's very understandable. Uh, (laughs) But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> I guess she played the I was manipulated, I had no free will, oh, I didn't know what I was doing, dude, I mean, you're a grown freaking person, it's just ridiculous, um, Sam Bankman got 25 years, I mean, that seems like, I mean, really, what's this guy gonna do when he gets out, I mean, I don't know. That's a long time. Uh, (laughs) Former executive got seven and a half years. Wow, man. I mean, they really screwed a ton of people. And the judge said, I've seen a lot of cooperators in 30 years. I've never seen one quite like Miss Ellison. So she, you know, just look at her. (laughs) Look how she's walking. Look at the posture. Look at the... I can only imagine... She was probably like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I had A's in school. I can't believe I'm in trouble. I was the good kid. I got gold stars from my teacher. I was, I was the teacher's pet. It was Sam. He manipulated me. It's like, (laughs) I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm not a judge, so I don't know what happened, but it seems pretty light uh, for everything that happened with FTX, how she just gets off like that. Um, when she was very much, you know, a partner (laughs) with, with this. So yeah, uh, kind of interesting, kind of funny. I hope you laughed at my (laughs) impressions. Uh, but anyway, South Korean foundation to recover funds from defunct crypto exchanges. I thought this was just kind of interesting. Uh, 10 of the 22 crypto exchanges in South Korea have closed and another three have suspended operations. Uh, that's very, very interesting. That's a lot. Uh, and it's kind of just, a. Uh, warning, you know, be cautious with centralized exchanges. I don't like I'm in DeFi. I do all that stuff now. But when I started out in crypto, I was, you know, getting on these really obscure centralized exchanges to buy like, you know, re- very new coins like, oh, this is the coin that's on. Oh, it's on this exchange. It's not on the big exchange yet. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, be very careful keeping money on centralized exchanges. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that was, I thought that was interesting and you can check out this article more if you want, but that is it for today. Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday. We are halfway through the week and I will see you tomorrow on Thursday. Peace out.